What we try to do with our music is to paint a picture, an audio picture, uh, to best uh, get across the message we're trying to convey with the lyrics. And uh, we use whatever means we can to do that. It's kind of fun sometimes as an exercise to walk down a city street and just hear the snippets of conversation that are going on around you. Um, people pulling up in cars, talking on cell phones, talking to each other, talking to themselves. There's a lot of that going on these days. <laughs> so uh, it, it's kind of, uh, we, we live oftentimes in this cacophony of sound that's going on around us. And we tend to oftentimes um, kind of push it away and not think about it, even though it does affect us, I think, and, and does uh, perhaps influence us in some way. You know, we, uh, but we consciously were involved with our own thing, what, what's going on inside us. Well, you know, music is, is such a subjective thing. Uh, people hear music differently. Um, there's been all kinds of studies on it. Some people only hear bass and drums. They can't discern um, a chordal structure. They can't uh, separate the melody from the rhythm. They just don't get it. They hear music as a wall of sound. Um, musicians, on the other hand, uh, can pick out very minute details within music. They can tell you what you know certain uh, instruments are doing at certain times. Um, they can separate all the instruments out. They can hear that difference, you know? So, you know, some people talk about, oh, the dangers of subliminal messages. Um, they talk about that in music, and I think that topic itself is subjective. What is subliminal? It all depends on who's listening. You know, I hear things very clearly in records, you know, that are there, because that's my gig, that's what I do. You know, I listen to things very carefully. Other people, might think something's subliminal because they never heard it before. Well, they're just not focused on it. So I think it's all kind of debatable. I think all kids sort of learn that there's all these rules that surround modern life in the society you live in. And it's, it's painted as a black and white life. You know, This is what it's like. These are the rules. This is how you live your life. And the older you get, you find that that's not true at all. It's all very gray, very open to interpretation. It's all very subjective. One year it's against the law to drive 55, the next year they up it to 70. So what's real? You know, It's all just subjective stuff that we all banter about and come to some sort of agreement. You know, The rich get richer, the poor stay poor, and the middle class pay for everything. And that don't change, baby. You know, that's the way it works in America. And uh, politics is sort of a, a series of compromises that uh, really don't help all classes. They tend to benefit the very rich, and they keep the rich in the rich world. And uh, the rest of us kind of, like, take it, you know? And we believe what it is they sell us. And they're very good at selling us stuff. In fact. We've grown up with it. Several generations now have grown up watching TV. And television is all about selling something. You know, There's not anything on the TV that's not trying to sell you something. And uh, we buy that. I mean, especially America. We, we're the biggest buyers of commercials there, is, there are. I mean, think about it. Freedom is this vehicle that you're going to buy. There's no freedom in buying a vehicle. All you're doing is standing in the line with all the other yo-yos out there, you know, waiting for gas, waiting to get on the freeway, waiting to get off the freeway, <laughs> you know. But we buy it, you know. We buy it commercial. You know what we buy it. That, you know, take fashion industry, for example, you know. Man, do we buy that stuff, you know. We really believe that this is the way a woman should look. This, this version of some guy's marketing plan that he's set up, you know? Why do we think that's real? But it's plastered around everywhere we go, everywhere we see, magazines, uh, and all it is is just somebody's opinion, you know? Why do we buy it? Why is it so persuasive? Do we really feel that bad about ourselves that we are constantly looking for something to make ourselves feel better? I, I think... Uh, that we're censored heavily without us even realizing it. I mean, just 
omitting a story from a newspaper is censorship. That happens every day in every paper around, around the world, especially in America where, what, a couple guys own all the newspapers and all the content that goes into them. So what's the difference, you know? One thing I, uh, I hear quite often from a, a lot of people, uh, I get letters, emails, um, nobody's actually had the balls to say it to me, to my face, but I read quotes like, musicians and artists shouldn't have any opinions about political matters and shouldn't make their political uh, uh, perspectives uh, known to people within their art. You know what I say to those people? Fuck you. You know, that the day that I give up my right to express how I feel in my art is the day I leave this country. And this country was founded on that, you know. It was founded on the idea of communicating and talking about what you believe. And uh, who else is going to do it besides artists, you know? We, we don't have anything to lose. <laughs> I know the Judas Priest situation was completely thrown out as bogus. I'm not so certain about the Aussie situation, I didn't follow that one. But in this country, anybody can bring anybody to court. You don't even have to have a valid reason. It's a completely asinine legal system in our country. It's so convoluted, so specialized, that uh, somebody could sue me today and not have a any grounds, but if they have a, a bankroll big enough to support the court case, they can keep the court case going for months and months and months. They could exhaust me financially, and they have the right to do that. Doesn't that seem bizarre? These people really believe that the artist is speaking directly to them with a song, and they interpret it that way, and they go to incredible lengths to communicate with the artists or threaten the artist. Uh, some people feel threatened by what it is the artist is telling them. I mean, whack jobs, right? But it costs the artist, a, a, well, a large financial investment to protect themselves from these wackos who are interpreting what that song means to them, you know? Some people interpret it as, oh, interesting. Well, that's a kind of neat, neat idea. Other people, he's talking to me. He wants me to move into his house, you know, things like this. So, I don't know what my point is. It's just that. Well, you hear about that? Has that ever happened to you? I've had to move, really? several times. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I get threatening letters occasionally from my political beliefs or my my openness about what I think. Yeah. You know, who has the means to fight Exxon? You know, or. Uh, Halliburton or one of these companies, you know, not me. <laughs> all, all we can do in our position is write about it and talk about it and try to get some uh, points across in a way that uh, perhaps become uh, challenging for people and, and get them to think about, about it. Um, inspir music can be incredibly inspirational. Art is uh, the backbone of society's growth and uh, you know no wonder they want to censor it no wonder they want to put it down no wonder they take it out of schools you know they don't want people to express themselves they want people to follow orders push buttons stand in line they're afraid to death of the rogue mentality and they do not want inspiration out there well they say they do you know that's towing the party line you know but no they don't want anybody that thinks different outside of the box, they're definitely afraid of that.